for black girl nerds. Today is your lucky day, Roy Fitzgerald. I just decided to sign you. How is that possible? You haven't seen any of my work. What work? You just said you haven't done anything. You read for Anna Rogers last week. She's casting the Barbara Stanwyck picture at MGM. Yeah. I, well, I wasn't sure it gone all that well. It didn't. But... She said you were terrible. You know what my talent is? I know in the first 30 seconds if somebody's got what it takes to be a star. And you, believe it or not, you got it. You got picture potential. It's the J Room, yay! All <laughs> together, this is where it's at. Thank you, all of you, for your wonderful performances. I laughed, I cried, I was mad. I enjoyed a whole spectrum of emotions from all of your performances. I'll Thank start you. with Jim. Yes, ma'am. Jim, we learn a lot about your character that Henry is not just a hardcore agent, he's just kind of a sadist and, and, and just does some really grimy, grimy, grimy things in the pursuit yes. of a legend in Hollywood. What was, yeah. your, what was it like to portray that type of character and even learn some of the, the history yeah. of uh, Hollywood in those days? Well, portraying that character was probably a lot more fun than it maybe should have been to a more moral human being. I'm not sure, but I had a really great time doing it. Um, it was it was interesting. There were two main things that stuck out to me about playing him and about that era, which was that number one, it was so long ago that people were still defining their roles. You know, he was one of the first real kind of managerial types as far as an agent went of people back in that day. But the second thing was that um, a lot of his, a lot of the things that he did were, were bred out of the uh, shame and hiddenness of being a homosexual in that day and age. Um, and not that all of that is gone in this day and age, but it's, it's a very different story. And I certainly don't say that as an excuse for his lascivious behavior, but I do think he was viewed in a special and negative light sometimes because his lascivious nature was homosexual and not heterosexual. Mm -hmm. Explain yourself. What do you want me to say? Start from the beginning, why don't you? Okay. I moved to LA after I got out of the service. I wanted to be a writer. I still do. I wrote a script, you know, a screenplay about Peg and Whistle, a girl who jumped off the Hollywood sign because the town wouldn't accept her. I know the feeling, so I wrote about it, sold my script too, but a hundred bucks ain't much. In the studio, ain't gonna put a black man under contract. With Jeremy and with your character, a lot of people will, a lot of black people in America will look at that character and really deeply feel and empathize what you went through from trying to erase you from your own creative endeavors, from uh, appropriation to a number of issues that your character faces in pursuit of bringing the story Meg, Peg Meg to life. Right. Uh, when you look at uh, your character's journey from beginning to to end we don't want to disclose what happens in the end was were there emotional moments what spectrum of emotions did you go through just seeing the evolution of of archie and what archie had to to face in that era you know for sure i think for me um the parallel is this was this is my first kind of this is my first tv show it's my first time working with ryan murphy mm -hmm. uh, and as a young black artist you question a lot of the times is there a room for you is there space for you because you don't see as many opportunities as you would like. So here I was given an opportunity and they were asking me to play and to lean in and dig in. Um, and that was exciting. But again, I felt that I felt this, this, um, this presence of just wanting to be and create a world for Archie that felt hopeful and inspiring. I know that Archie being a black gay man in the forties had to move different. He had to have a sweat bag and a nuanced way about him because here he was trying to you know, um, enter an industry that wasn't built for him. 
they weren't, you know, they weren't looking his way. So I knew that he was going to have to fight a little bit harder. He was going to have to yell a little bit louder. And I think that's just what he does is he continues to push forward and lean in a little bit because at the end of the day, he has not much to lose and only everything to gain. And with Jake, with your character, Rock Hudson, pro- the most obviously the most prominent person that people will recognize, the name they'll recognize the most coming out of that era, uh, people who may remember, younger audience members may not, but a lot for a lot of us, Rock Hudson was kind of like the face of HIV and learning those things. He was like the first prominent person to learn about that, but that's not part of this story. But with portraying right. that type of character, Rock Hudson, did you look back to his history in Hollywood or how did you shape how you presented Rock Hudson in this series? Basically everything I could get my hands on, you know. Uh, uh, watched all his old films, Magnificent Obsession, Pillow Talk. Um, uh, watched them on silent, kind of studied the body language and kind of delved into his uh, his family history to understand his relationships um, and why he was the way he was, you know. But um, I think that he truly was uh, uh, a hero. And I think the tragic part was the fact that, you know, he felt ostracized and... Um, or at least he had to, uh, you know, kind of keep a secret. And I think that's the tragedy in that. Um, but, uh, yeah. You know, I'll lob it back over to you, Jeremy, to to wrap it up. Do you feel now that the industry has really turned a corner? Ryan Murphy has really made extraordinary strides in representation for members of the LGBTQ community to have these portrayals in these different worlds. Do you feel like we're closer to the equity. Are we at the equity? Where do you think we're at now in Hollywood? We are the generation. We are the people. Uh, we being Ryan's, we being everyone you're looking at, we are the artists and activists that will continue to fight and push the needle forward. I think that Hollywood is another opportunity for us to do that, for us to show our industry what new faces and new stories can look like and new opportunities can be. Um, you know, but I think we're still fighting for equal opportunity, whether it be in the LGBTQ community or women um, or black people or minority, whatever it is, you know, so we'll, we'll continue to do that. I do think there is hope, um, but again, it's gonna take us continuing to push forward and grab a hold of our neighbors and, you know, yell louder and, 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 and you know, really fight for our voices and our stories to be told and seen. Thank you, you guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. I Thank you. I loved it. I cried. Oh, it was so good. I loved it. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.